Do you ever feel like manifestation is just another thing on your to-do list that you don't have time for? Like your spiritual practice is something that you have to do? Honestly, you're not alone because I felt that way too. Something that's really changed my relationship with manifestation is blending it into my lifestyle so that no matter what I'm doing, I'm also manifesting. I call this manifestation as a lifestyle and it single-handedly made the entire manifestation journey more enjoyable for me and I've seen my desires show up with a lot more ease. Manifesting as a lifestyle has made manifestation go from feeling like a task to something I just naturally do because it's who I am. If you'd like to learn more about this, I've created a step-by-step guide for you. I'll link it in my show notes so you can check it out. You're listening to the Affirmation Addict Podcast with Pyle Corley. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so much for being here. And now it's time to get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Affirmation Addict Podcast. My name is Pyle, and today we're talking about spiritual practices. So, We all, by we, I mean anyone who talks about manifestation, whether it's your friend, a coach, somebody online, whoever it is, whenever we're talking about creating your reality on purpose, we always recommend some sort of a spiritual practice. And I think in kind of the nature of social media, in the way most of us get a lot of our information and our tips, I think it's kind of become an unspoken narrative that your spiritual practice, aka your affirmations, your meditation, your visualizing, that is to help your desire come in. And although that is true, I think we almost think it's a way of like impressing or putting on a show or kind of like putting in the effort so we get our response back, like we get our results back. Um, And I think that is so it's not a reward. Like your spiritual practice isn't something you're like punishing yourself for in order to get a reward. I almost feel like that's the approach that we take. And I think it can put a lot of one pressure on the spiritual practice because we're looking for something as a result of doing it. Two, it can make us dread it because it starts to feel like homework. And then the three, it's actually has our intentions all in the wrong place. So I want to remind you that the universe actually could care less about your spiritual practice. You're affirmations, your visualization, all of that, the universe really doesn't care. The universe's role in the manifestation process is literally trying to give you your desire. Your spiritual practices role is to help you get out of your own way. And I think that's where a lot of us have it wrong. I think most of us, at least even me, when I started my spiritual practice, when I started manifestation, I would use my spiritual practice as a means to get my manifestation, not as a means to get out of my own way. I didn't realize that I was the problem in a way and not the problem, but like that I was the one that I was trying to help. I thought I was trying to kind of impress or show the universe or help the universe understand what it is that I want. But as children of the universe, we are all children of the universe. We are all part of the same energy. The universe knows what you want. The universe is literally trying to provide for you. We just consciously get in our own ways. We sometimes deter ourselves and are giving mixed signals off and do things that are actually not very helpful on the manifestation journey. So your spiritual practice isn't actually for the universe. It's for you. It's for you to feel better given your current circumstances, because I think we use our spiritual practice as a way to change our 3D, a change our circumstances, which is totally fine. However, a huge part of your spiritual practice being actually effective is a way for you is using it as a way for you to help yourself appreciate, accept, or just be okay with your current circumstances or regardless of your current circumstances. If you want nothing to do with your current reality, how can you still feel fine? Because that's where we talk about parallel universes and quantum leaping and all of these different things. When people say there's another reality in which all of your dreams are manifested and you there's a version of you that exists that's what they're trying to talk about is it's not for the universe that we're doing this we're doing this to kind of help our conscious mind out a little bit help ourselves not overanalyze and overthink and have so much anxious energy around the manifestation process and i it took me so long to understand this it took me honestly teaching manifestation to really understand that 
the spiritual practice isn't for anybody else. It's not for the universe. It's not for your desires to come in faster. It's for you to feel better in the now. It's for you to feel fine that your desire isn't here yet. And how do you manage that? That's the point of your spiritual practice. Most of us approach a spiritual practice or even partake in a spiritual practice just to get that desire. But when we do that, it creates a very different relationship. And that's what causes most of us to skip our practice, dread our practice, or do our practice half heartedly. And there's so many um, repercussions that you deal with, which is your manifestation not coming, it taking longer, or it not coming in the way that you expected or wanted. Um, and And it helps us kind of realize that, okay, maybe I am missing the point of my spiritual practice. So I really, really want, as you start to build your own spiritual practice, I want you to remember that your spiritual practice isn't here to bring you your desire. Your desires are literally already on their way by law, by the power of manifestation, by just you being you, your desires are on their way. Your practice is here to help you feel better given the circumstances that you're in, given the life that you're in, given your current 3D, it's here to help you. Your spiritual practice is like your personal toolkit as a byproduct of you kind of focusing on your energy, focusing on how you feel in the now, even though you know you want that desire, your manifestation can still come in and will probably come in in a much more seamless way than we realize. And that's why people talk about detachment all the time. This It's a very big buzzword and it is very helpful, but it's hard to understand why to detach when we don't realize that part of detachment is honestly just turning the attention inwards. And that's what your spiritual practice is literally designed for. So two ways that I break up my spiritual practice, I kind of have two techniques that you can pick whichever one resonates with you. So the first way I like to kind of build a spiritual practice, and I'm a very structured person, I love formulas, I love kind of a chart. I love something that is um, systematized. Honestly, I'm a Virgo moon. So that probably makes sense to you if you know anything about astrology and Virgos. So for me, the first method, I talk about this a lot, is manifesting as a lifestyle. And if you really want to learn how to do this, I walk you through this in my guide. So link is in the show notes if you really want to learn. However, a brief overview by what I mean by manifesting as a lifestyle is you do one thing for each element of your vibration, which makes up you, your your lifestyle, how you are in your day to day. So that is you do one thing for your mental state, one thing for your emotional state, one thing for your energetic state, one thing for your physical state, and one thing for your spiritual state. And those are the five elements that make up our vibration in total. They are shifting on a day to day basis. They are some things you're kind of interacting with each of those states every single day and every single moment. There's, they're always at play. So that's my personal favorite way to manifest and use a spiritual practice because one, it is something that can be combined into things I'm already doing, such as my skincare or cooking my food or working out or working on my computer. I can really leverage and just use simple, simple perspective shifts and moments of awareness to infuse my spiritual practice, not only into my day, but also into all of the elements elements that make up who I am. So it really helps me be more present and appreciative of my day to day. This is what I use when I am just kind of in a more maintenance mode of accepting my current reality. And when my kind of desire feels a little bit far, um, or a little bit more vague, and I'm overcomplicating it, I focus back into my lifestyle, kind of focusing in on the little things, if you would, if you want to say it that way, you can obviously use this technique and this method for like manifesting something specific. It's what I've used my entire life. But this is the approach and the structure that I use when I am honestly trying really hard to enjoy my present, no matter how it looks like whether I have my desires or I don't, that's my kind of main focus is like, enjoy where I'm at, enjoy my life and feel better throughout my day. Kind of like a holistic, longer, more sustainable vibration rather than just like a 10 minute routine. Hi, beautiful friend. I hope you're enjoying this episode. I wanted to hit pause for 15 seconds and share with you about my spiritual membership I created to help you raise your vibration and manifest with ease. 
I created Affirmit so you can have access to all, and I really mean all of the spiritual tools you need to step into your higher self and watch your dreams manifest with ease. If you're really ready to dive into your spirituality and connect with your highest self, I invite you to join the Affirmit membership. More details are in the show notes if you're interested. And now let's jump back in. The other option, um, another kind of way that you can build a spiritual practice for yourself is breaking it down by your tools. So if you love the different tools, you love affirmations, you love meditations, you love um, EFT tapping, you love journaling, and you're a tools kind of person, you kind of want to hit all those notes. What I like to do is I like to try and take three tools a day. And maybe that's a meditation, writing down some affirmations and doing a round of EFT tapping. And that you can be a little bit more targeted on a specific desire or a specific energy that you want to feel. You can be a little bit more targeted and That is a really good one if you feel like the manifestation as a lifestyle is a little bit too vague or a little bit too much of an ask for you. This is a really good place to start. And if you need help with kind of what tools am I supposed to use, my membership, which is called Affirm It, has all of my spiritual tools in there. It's only $8 a month and actually very relevant to this. Something new that I'm starting is I'm going to do weekly spiritual practices and energy checks together live on Zoom with me. They will not be recorded, but it's a way for you to just kind of get into the practice of practicing manifestation. We intellectualize manifestation so much. We talk about it so much, but like how often are you actually sitting there and writing down some affirmations? How often are you actually doing it? And how much are you just thinking about it? And I want it to be less cerebral and more physical, more tangible because the desires you're seeking are tangible. They are in your life. You want to be, you want them to be in your life, right? So I am starting that. That is included in the membership. It's literally $8 a month, less than coffee now a days. And I think it's such a helpful way for all of us to get together, stay accountable, be supportive, and just a shift in energy. So I think that's going to be a super fun addition, which is actually so fitting for this episode. So message me on Instagram or just stay tuned on my Instagram because I'll be announcing dates and stuff that I'm going to be doing the spiritual practices. Um, So those are the two ways that I like to kind of break up a spiritual practice. One is by going the lifestyle approach and one is by going the tools approach and see which one feels better for you. If you feel like you don't have time to sit and do a bunch of tools, maybe you do need to go and blend it into your lifestyle. And what I recommend doing is I know both of these are very targeted towards my approach. However, if you have none of my products, none of my offerings, the best way you can start is by just doing one thing a day. Whether it's literally you just sitting here and listening to this podcast and you set the intention that me listening to this episode is bringing me closer to my desire. Because ultimately, your spiritual practice whatever you're doing, it's intention. Your intention creates everything. Your intention is all that matters. It could be as simple as putting on a ring and using that as energy protection. It could be as simple as brushing your hair and whatever hair is falling out is limiting beliefs that are falling out. Like you can get super creative with this, but the first and foremost, most important thing is self-awareness and awareness in the moment of your practice. So these are just different and creative ways to bring awareness into things that you're doing. But what I would recommend, if you have none of my products, none of my tools, you're unfamiliar with it and you don't feel the need to actually go that that deep and build a truly sustainable practice, start with one thing a day. One thing, whether you're just experimenting, you don't need to expect a result out of it. You're just having fun with it. And I would recommend the best ways to start it with little things that you're doing every day and see how you can make it a little bit more intentional. See how you can bring a little bit more awareness into your day or write an affirmation and set it as your wallpaper for the day or say it in the mirror Um, and just play with it. Because I think your spiritual practice is so skippable when it's way too serious. When we treat it like homework, when we're like, where is my desire? I think our spiritual practice is way easier to stick to when we're actually enjoying it. So play with it. Maybe you're more into the lifestyle approach. Maybe you're more into the structured tools approach. But what I do want to say is that daily 
intention of coming back to yourself for even five seconds is what's going to trump any method or technique. It's the daily desire to focus in on you. And I think we all want to do that. We all just sometimes don't know how to do that. So that's why I actually have made my products. It's because I want it to become easier. I want to give you a structure that you can follow. But ultimately, the intention is you come back to yourself every single day, whatever that looks like for you. And that's a true spiritual practice. The true spiritual practice is about you and only you. It's not about where the heck is my desire or speeding up your manifestation. It's about how am I feeling right now? How is my energy? What do I want it to be? And how do I help myself get there? That's the point of a spiritual practice. So take away all of the different TikTok videos and Instagram techniques that you're seeing. And maybe it's literally just sitting for 30 seconds in the corner of your house and taking a few deep breaths. It does not have to be complicated. You don't actually need to buy anything. It can just be an internal practice of you connecting with yourself. And try that. Give yourself a week and say, hey, from today, from me listening to this episode, can I come back to myself once a day, every day? And if you skip a day, no judgment, start over and build yourself up to that. Because honestly, no one can force you to be closer to you. Um, and your spiritual practice is meant to be there for you. So find it, find ways for you to feel like you're actually enjoying it rather than doing this to get a result. Because then it's rooted in lack, it's rooted in desperation, and maybe even a little bit of fear of it not happening. And that's never actually going to help. We want you to look forward to your spiritual practice. And for me, both of my techniques actually make it fun for me. So it's really easy. But try this method first. And then if you feel called, dive into one of the techniques if you need some more help on it. Now, I want to talk about how to guarantee results with your spiritual practice. And that is such a trick um, kind of question or comment, because there's no guarantee. And I feel like that is the hardest part because your spiritual practice is not guaranteeing you anything. It is not a foolproof thing. It's not a guarantee in any way, shape, or form. Like there is no guarantees. And once you can accept that and be like, okay, then why do I want to do my spiritual practice in the first place? For me, it's because I feel 1% better. I feel a little bit more happy. I feel a little bit more peaceful. And I know that that has compounded over the years. But when I first started, it was because I felt at my lowest. My spiritual practice was a way for me to get out of anxiety or overthinking or major fear. It wasn't to maintain. I wasn't feeling that good. I was honestly very, very low energy. So my spiritual practice was almost like a relief. It was like a moment of peace. It was like a moment of I can take a deep breath and not feel constriction in my chest. It was a moment of, wow, I don't hate myself. Like I kind of like who I am and I like my life. And it was just a moment. And honestly, that moment was so magical in those moments that it became more and more motivating for me to spend more time getting into that state for even longer periods of time to the point where now my spiritual practice, I think everything I do is part of my spiritual practice and everything I do is helping me feel even better, even better, even better, even when I'm feeling low. I'm like, this isn't that bad. I can actually know, I know how to feel better and I can feel low and let myself feel low. And then I feel better so much quicker rather than avoiding the feeling. So you're going to be on this journey and the spiritual journey is so variable for everybody. And I don't want to kind of lie to you and tell you that it's going to be this like structure that you're going to follow and it's going to look the same every day because the truth is we are energetic beings and energy is always in motion, meaning we are always in motion. So it's going to look different each day. Your spiritual practice can be one minute today, one hour tomorrow, an entire day the next day. Your spiritual practice can be 30 seconds and still be effective. Like bust all of the little projections and implications and rules you've put on your practice and start to make it something that actually works for you because it is so easy for us to skip our spiritual practice 
with all of the excuses and stories that we tell ourselves. So I really hope that this episode can bring you back to the basics. The fundamental is coming back to you. So how are you going to come back to yourself today? Maybe it's just taking one deep breath in the shower. Maybe while you brush your teeth, after you finish brushing your teeth, look at yourself in the mirror and just say hi to yourself. Like it can be so simple and it can get deeper, but let yourself start simple. Don't feel the pressure to dive into this elaborate practice. Like let yourself build up. It's okay to build up. It's probably more effective that you build up rather than do this elaborate practice and burn out in a month. You know, I would rather your practice be like a slow rise rather than just a super high start and a quick drop to the end that you can never get back up to. So give yourself permission for your spiritual practice to be variable, to be a work in progress, and to be for you, not to get your desire. Because that's when you take the pressure off. And that's when you can actually start to enjoy your spiritual practice for what it is. We have missed the point of what our spiritual practice is. We've totally mislabeled why we do our spiritual practice. So I really hope this episode can help you not only create a spiritual practice you can stick to, but also one that you can enjoy and one that will get you results. So Thank you so much for being here. I am so excited for your spiritual practice to become something that you actually want to do, not that you feel like you have to do. I love you and I am so excited for your future. Thanks for being here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If this episode resonated with you, it would mean the world to me if you can rate and review the podcast and share it on your social media so I know to keep creating episodes that are inspiring you to manifest. I'm so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today and I'd love for you to join the community by following at Affirmation Addict on Instagram. To continue diving into spirituality and manifestation, head over to my website, affirmation-addict.com. Until next time, I'm sending you so much love and so much healing energy.